Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be going over the Hyper Accelerated Dragon in the Sicilian Defense. So the Sicilian starts out with e4, c5, this is the Sicilian, and then after knight 2 f3, black plays g6. Now, before we get into the Hyper Accelerated Dragon, it's good to understand both the Dragon and the Accelerated Dragon dragon i do have a video on both of those i recommend at some point you watch those if you're going to play any of the dragon systems first we're going to take a look at the main line in the dragon and that starts out with d6 instead of that g6 move here and d6 is one of the main differences in the dragon as well as the accelerated and the hyper accelerated because this d6 pawn is protecting the e5 square which usually in the other variations, you're going to be using your knight here on c6 to protect the square here on e5. But in the dragon, black normally plays d6. And then we see d4. There's an exchange in the center of the board. Knight to f6. And then after knight to c3, we play g6. This is the dragon. Now, one reason that players will not opt to play the dragon is because this is a very aggressive line. One of the sharpest variations in all the Sicilian, which is already a very sharp defense from black. And one of the most aggressive lines is the Yugoslav attack, which continues with bishop to e3, uh, bishop to g7, fian cutting on the king side, f3 here. And after castle on the king side, we have queen to d2, knight c6, and then castle on the queen side. Both sides castling on opposite sides, and it really comes down to throwing all your material at your opponent, sacking up a bunch of material, and then hopefully win a quick checkmate. In these types of games, every single move matters. And so what black has found over time is that controlling the center of the board in these types of games is very important. And black would really like to play the move d5 at some point. But black has already used one of its moves to play this d7 to d6. So the other variations we're going to look at, the accelerated and then the main video, the hyper accelerated, really dig into what if black doesn't play this move here of d6. Now, if we come back to this position, the main difference in the accelerated and even the hyper accelerated compared to the dragon is this d pawn right here the dragon pushes it to d6 but in the other variations black's looking to play the move d5 at some point not early on and so instead of playing d6 black plays knight to c6 this is the accelerated dragon and this piece is defending the square here on e5 now after d4 exchange here knight takes on d4 then pawn to g6. So the in the accelerated dragon, black is able to avoid the most aggressive line that white has, and that's the Yugoslav attack. But white also has compensation. White's able to play the move pawn to c4 because the knight is not blocking the pawn, which many times in the Sicilian, you do have the knight here on c3, so you can't push forward with that pawn. So pawn to c4, and this is the Meroxy bind. It's very difficult for black many times to combat this because, as we mentioned earlier, one of the key moves that black's looking to do is play d5. White now has two pawns controlling this square right here on d5. So that's kind of main ideas in the dragon, in the accelerated dragon. So now we're going to get into the hyper accelerated dragon. And the hyper accelerated dragon, instead of playing d6 or knight to c6, black plays the move g6. Now, because this e5 square is undefended, that means that black is looking to play bishop to g7 before black ever plays the move knight to f6. So in this video today, we're going to be looking at a few options, but they're all going to come from the move d4 this is the main line that you're going to see and so after the exchange right here we're going to look at one if they take here on d4 if they do black's always playing bishop here to g7 and they have two main options that you'll see one is if they continue with the main line of knight to c3 the other is if they play the Meroxy bind in this position, and that is with pawn to c4. Those are the most common ones that you'll see. The other variation we are going to look at is if what if the knight doesn't take here on d4? What if the queen takes here on d4, which is a reasonable play? You get a very 
powerful piece involved into the center of the board. It just opened up this diagonal right here. In this case, you throw everything out the window. You can't play that bishop here to g7. You have to play the knight to f6, knowing that they can now push forward here to e5. So those are the variations we are going to look at. There are a lot of variations in the Hyper Accelerated Dragon. If you want to see others, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments if this is a very popular video and you do like to see extended lines in the Sicilian. Happy to make another video on this variation uh, or any of the other dragon variations as well. The first variation we are going to look at is after d4. We do see the exchange right here. Knight takes on d4 and then bishop to g7. White has two options, knight to c3 and the pawn c4. We're going to be looking at knight to c3 first. And black's going to play knight to c6. Now, pretty much any high-level player is never going to take with their knight here on c6. It's a bad move. Don't do that. Black can recapture with the b pawn. Now, black has more central pawns. Also, it opens up the door for the light square bishop to get involved into the game. And the rook can easily come here to the B file. It's a semi-open file for this rook to attack. As we already mentioned in this variation, white many times is looking to castle on the queen side. If you have a rook here on the B file, eyeing down on the queen side, that's not a very good thing for white. So they really should not be looking to exchange. But if they do, you can punish them. It's definitely not something that white should look to do. So if they do play knight to c6, which you're going to be playing, bishop and the knight both eyeing down this knight right here, white should be playing bishop to e3. This is the most common for sure that you're going to see because they're looking to develop their queen side pieces so they can castle to the queen side of the board. Now black plays knight to f6 preparing to castle on the king side. You have bishop down here to c4 and then you have a couple options as far as uh, how black can continue. One option, I'd consider it more the safe option, is just to castle on uh, the king side. From here, they can bring their bishop back to b3. Remember, at some point in the hyper accelerated dragon, black is looking to push forward with d5. And this make sure that it's kind of out of the way of that thread. At some point, black can be looking to play knight takes here on e4, and then follow that up at some point with d5, opening up for the light square bishop also to get involved into the game. So bishop to b3 makes a lot of sense. At this point, you could play queen to a5, pinning down the knight on c3 to the king. But if we come back, I think an even better line to play in this position, instead of castling on the king side right away, is to play that queen to a5. This is pinning down the knight right away. And you can see the threat. This knight is the only defender of this e4 square. So the threat is knight taking here on e4. Now, if we start to look at how white can really defend this, well, one, you could try to defend it by playing queen to d3. Forget the fact that the knight's pinned. You just want to protect this pawn right here on uh, e4. Unfortunately, this isn't going to work out too well because black just has the move knight to e5. This is attacking the queen. The queen is forced to move. It can no longer defend this pawn and then knight takes here on e4. That's not a very good alternative for white. So instead, they could play queen to d2. Then things get pretty crazy because black can still take there on e4. Now, there could be an exchange. Knight takes here on c6 attacking the queen. You can see the queen take here. You could see an exchange on board, but all of a sudden, white has double pawns. Now, white does have the bishop pair here, but at the end of the day, I like this position from black for sure. The pawn structure is just much better, and black should be able to turn this into a win. So they usually are not going to be using their queen to stop this pin right here. Instead, they should just be looking to castle on the king side. If that's the case... Black can also just castle on the king side as well. And now there's lots of options. You could see a3 from white. Uh, you could see the bishop come back to b3. You could even play the knight here to b3 attacking the queen. Uh, but the queen here on a5 has lots of options as well. It can swing over to the king side of the board. Uh, now this is a little bit different than kind of the, your normal dragon lines where white's castling on the queen side but this move queen to a5 really forced their hand 
as we come back and look at the king castling, you really want to be moving your queen in the normal dragon line so that you can castle queen side. But we already looked at it. it doesn't do a lot of good if white moves this queen and then looks to castle on the queen side. So uh, it's not as aggressive as the normal dragon lines, which is one of the reasons that some people like to play the hyper accelerated dragon. Now let's take a look at the Moroxy bind variation in the hyper accelerated dragon. And so instead of knight to c3, white's going to be playing pawn to c4, trying to stop the push for the black has of pawn to d5 at some point. So black can't play that right away. Instead, knight to c6, attacking the knight here on d4. We've already talked about white should not be looking to take this material right here. They could, but they probably won't. Instead, since the knight and the bishop are both attacking, then just reinforce right here with bishop 2e3. These are the most common lines that you will see. If you don't, there's probably a theory around a, a much better position that black's going to get out of this. Knight to f6. This square here on e5 can't push forward because this knight here on c6. So very different than the dragon as we talked about, which normally protects that e5 square with d6. Now knight to c3. Now a very interesting move from black, and that's the move knight to g4 attacking this bishop here on e3. And really the best move from white is to take with the queen here on g4 and it looks weird like this knight here on g4 is not protected if the pawn had already pushed forward that makes sense the bishop here on c8 is protecting it but it's not protected right now the queen can just take it right away but this is okay because black has the move knight takes here on d4 but there's no other options really that white has here if the bishop moves Okay, well then there's only one defender on this knight here on d4. Both the knight and the bishop are attacking it. So it's either going to fall or you're going to see it move and this knight here on d4 is not going to be protected. So queen takes here on a g4, knight takes here on d4. And then there's a few options. Really the threat here is that this knight here on d4 is threatening to come here on c2 check and fork this rook here on a1. So I just showed one of the moves here. One of the options is to play queen to d1. We have to think about how white can protect this square here on c2. Another option is to castle on the king side, or they could play bishop here to d3. So let's look at that first option there of castling on the king's or the queen side. I think this is a good option from white. It gets a rook engage into the game but you can see there's a lot of air in front of this king so there's a lot of exposure that black can start to attack at some point because there's no pawns in front of it at all even if it comes over here to be one it's still very vulnerable to an attack but right away this does force the knight to come back here to c6 now if they use the bishop instead so bishop here to d3 this is protecting this c2 square well now black can play the move d5 and the reason they could play that you may look at it and say well man before he said you couldn't play d5 because both of these pawns are right here the difference is this is a discovered attack on the queen so part of getting the queen out here to g4 is so that black can attack with a discovered attack so this is opening up a lot of attacking lines uh, that black has in there so they may look at this and say well i don't want that discovered attack on my queen so what if i just bring my queen back here to d1 they can absolutely do this. Uh, and this is, I think, fine for white. It protects the C2 square as they need to do from the fork here, but also keeps it so black can't just push forward that easily with D5 with a discovered attack. Now, black, instead of D5, is now going to be looking to play the move E5. This is a great outpost for this knight here on D4. And this is just adding another layer of protection for the knight here on D4. Now, because the pawn is here on e5, black's not going to be looking to push forward here on d5. That ship is sailed. They're looking to now support these dark squares. So they may be looking to play d6 at some point. That makes sense. This opens up for the light square bishop to get involved, support this pawn here on e5. So d6 is a viable option. Castling on the king side, not going to be doing that on the queen side. But this is how you're going to be playing it if you go against the Meroxy bind in the hyper accelerated dragon.
The last variation we're going to go over is what if the knight doesn't take here on d4? What if the queen just takes here on d4, attacking this rook here on h8? Black can't play bishop to d7, is forced to play knight to f6. But as you can tell from the other examples, knight to f6 without a d6 or a knight on c6 means that white can play the move pawn to e5. Now, luckily, that although the knights attacked, black doesn't have to respond to this threat right away because black has the move knight to c6, attacking this queen here on d4. Now, there's kind of two options that you'll see here. One is if the queen comes over here and is not defending or attacking this square here on d5 because then black can just play knight to d5 and then play bishop here to g7, castle on the king side, and things are fine. This is a good position for black. If they try to maintain control of the d5 square, so maybe queen to c4, well, now you're first going to be playing the move d5. This opens up for the light square bishop to get involved into the game. You also want to be attacking uh, this material from the queen. So that's that's definitely one option here. If they en passant, so they can actually capture, they have one move and one move only to capture this material, then black can play the move bishop to e6. They can also just capture with their queen, but I like attacking in this position. So bishop here to e6, forcing the queen to move. Then they can play bishop here to g7, castle on the king side. Get your rook over here to the D file. Uh, it can even bring it to the C file as well, depending on how they've set up their board. Now, if we come back, they don't have to play E5 pushing forward. They could just continue with, you know, of a normal knight to C3. Uh, building from the kind of the main lines of the Sicilian from white standpoint. From here, black's still going to be pushing with knight to C6, attacking the queen here. Queen's forced to move, and similar as we talked about before, there's a couple options, but if they play queen to a4, well, now we're going to be playing this move d6, uh, because we do need to stop the threat of e5. Now, that's usually done by d6 or c6, but this queen over here is sort of annoying, and we need to be moving one of our pawns in the center of the board, and... So eventually, we want to be moving our d-pawn, but we also know that we can't just push forward here with d5. They can push forward on e5, and then our knight's pinned down. That's not a good position from us as well. So while you're normally not playing d6 in the hyper-accelerated dragon, this is a completely different setup because the queen took here on d4. Now, once they're taking with their knight, in those variations, you're usually going to be looking to play d7 to d5. But if they capture with their queen, just know it's completely out the window. And you are going to be looking to play d6 if they're playing that queen to a5. So these are just some of the main variations that you will see. As you can imagine, there's a lot of variations in the Hyper Accelerated Dragon. Uh, definitely a good one though. I recommend watching the others if you haven't already, the main dragon as well as the Accelerated Dragon. I'm curious though, for those who have watched the entire video, uh, let me know in the comments below and just put a hundred after your comment. That'll let me know that you've watched the entire video. I know some people don't get through the whole thing, but curious if you did make the entire thing. Also just curious feedback on this setup. This is the first video where I've done commentary where I'm on camera. Uh, so trying it out, let me know what you think. If there's things that uh, could be improved, if you like the layout that I have going on. All that feedback is just going to let me make better and better videos in the future. So thank you guys so much for watching. If there's other variations in the Sicilian and the Hyper Accelerated Dragon that you want to see, feel free to let me know in the comments below. You can also email me as well. But thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.